After 10 years of moving more and more of the web development to the client, it looks like we are finally putting a stop to this madness and we are considering more sane approaches. In the front-end world, 2022 was a year where we focused more on the server side of things to achieve better overall performance. We saw frameworks like Astro reviving concepts such as the multi-page applications and the likes of SvelteKit or QuickCity putting more emphasis on HTML first efficient apps. In this video we look at Remix, a meta framework built on top of React. It is developed by the same team behind React Router and it introduced a couple of interesting concepts which were slowly adopted by all other frameworks. We will build a small full stack app which allows you to browse through various New York Times best-selling books, read details about them or add them to our reading list. This will give us the chance to build a UI using React while also providing server support via loaders and actions. So, first of all, let's set up a new project using the following npx command. The setup wizard is intuitive, just remember to choose TypeScript as our scripting language. A successful setup will result in this starter project. We'll do our work in the app directory and here you'll find a components folder where we'll store all our React UI components, a routes directory which powers the file system based router Remix uses to handle requests, a styles folder for our CSS rules and a services directory for any business logic related code. Before getting to some of the more interesting features, I want to quickly clarify the styling situation inside Remix. This is a common topic in UI development and the solutions vary. Some frameworks such as Velt or Vue allow you to write CSS directly in the component file, other frameworks rely on CSS modules and so on. In Remix, things are straightforward. You can create your CSS files in the styles directory and then in your component, export a links function constant containing a reference to the CSS file. Remix will take care of the rest, including scoping so that the rules don't leak between pages. Let's move to the home page next. I'm creating a React component in the route/index.tsx file. The naming conventions and routing file structure are important aspects here since the router is the central point of any web app. We'll go into more details in a few minutes, but for now, remember that Remix route modules have three primary exports: loaders, actions, and default components. As I already mentioned, Remix is built on top of React, so things should look familiar. I'm exporting a home function which returns JSX. When a user will access the root path of your domain, the route will resolve to this home component, the JSX will be computed on the server, and the client will receive static HTML as a response. As a subsequent step, a process called hydration is initiated, and any needed JavaScript behavior or event handlers are registered. If you are interested in such details, I talked at length about server-side rendering, hydration strategies and other alternatives in the video linked into the top right corner. So in the home component, we are linking to various book lists. Since the list name is a path variable and can easily change, let's create a dollar sign list tsx file under the routes directory. The dollar sign is important since it will allow us to extract and use this part of the URL. In this new file, let's take a look at loaders next. These are special functions which can help you load necessary data for a specific route. Here you can query databases or third-party APIs and the resulting information will be injected in a component via a special hook. Note that this code will run on the server, so as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there is this mindset shift and instead of rendering and fetching everything on the client, the server is smartly engaged in some of the work now. In the loader, using the past parameter, I am simply querying the New York Times developer API to fetch the needed information. Besides the books associated with the list, I am also fetching all the list names and will use this to populate an autocomplete component. With everything in place, I am also defining some TypeScript interfaces to clearly self-document my code. Ok, so in the movie list function, I am injecting the loader data into the component with the help of the use loader data hook. Then, in the JSX, I am using the end design autocomplete component to allow users to search through all movie lists. As a quick FYI, end design is a popular UI framework with an impressive collection of components. Despite being almost 10 years old, React is still king and ranks first in most dev surveys. Due to its rich ecosystem, it is a major asset for any meta framework using it. Back to Remix, let's quickly review what this framework is. Based on their documentation, it is a compiler in charge of building the artifacts and components needed for a full-stack JavaScript app to reliably run in production. Second of all, 
Remix is a server-side HTTP handler built on top of WebFetch API. Not only does this enable you to deploy Remix anywhere, but it also lets you incrementally adopt it in any existing JavaScript server. Third of all, in order to support its loaders and actions, Remix is a server framework, and finally, of course, it is a browser framework as well. Back to the code, let's iterate over the books list and render the details in a book component we'll work on next. This is a plain React component that receives some information as a property and then renders that information using JSX. Let's not spend too much time with the templating here. I'm rendering a book image, its title, author, and some details. Other than that, there are two small things of note. First of all, when the add button is clicked, a post request will be sent to the server. We'll get back to this in a minute. Second of all, users can navigate to a book details page by clicking the link component. As an FYI, clicking on this link will not cause a full page reload. Remix will fetch the new page contents and replace it for us in the browser. Okay, so let's discuss actions next. We are sending a post request to the server to the slash add path. Let's create an add.tsx file under the routes directory, and the first thing we'll do in here is to declare and export an action. This is the mechanism Remix uses to handle incoming HTTP requests. This code runs on the server, and here you can perform database updates and any other business logic you would do in a backend HTTP handler. In our case, I'll simply save the book ID in some sort of persistent storage, and I'll return a confirmation message back to the client. Of course, this is just a demo. In real-life scenarios, you should always validate the data you receive from the client and follow some standards when returning HTTP responses. Finally, let's work on the book detail page before wrapping things up. Also, I'll take a moment to remind you to subscribe to this channel if you want to stay up to date with the ever-changing dev environment. Okay, so users will make requests to the slash book slash ID URL to get the details. Let's create the following structure under routes to correctly map such requests. We'll get the details from a third-party API in the loader function, and then we'll call the use loader data hook to populate the component state. With the data available, I'll quickly go through the necessary JSX, and our app is pretty much ready. Please note that we just scratched the surface, and these are just a few of the many features a framework like Remix has to offer. It looks like the meta frameworks are gaining more traction in the front-end space, and we are finally able to write JavaScript isomorphic code, while building reliable, full-stack apps that can be deployed to the edge with just a couple of clicks. If you found this video useful, please consider liking it and help me fight the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, thank you for watching.